Chuck, I'm back in your face. Yes, you are. In Boom. your face. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> uh, okay, I got nothing for this week. Anything bugging you? All right, well, good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm sure you have something, but here's the deal. <laughs> There's, it's impossible for you to have nothing but. That's true. That is true. But I, you know, I just want to break right. from having to th- think this stuff so up. So here's the thing: an inordinate, an inordinate number of people online want to know about UFOs, which to me, I'm like, how does a scientist talk about UFOs? Because the. Well, just to be clear, could you could you quantify inordinate? Yeah. Well, <laughs> isn't there an inordinate number of people online that? Believe anything? Uh, you know what? If you, we are talking the internet, so yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mm-hmm. make a difference because they find each other. Yes, they do. They create communities. They get together yeah. and they breed, and as a result, breed. the world <laughs> suffers. So <laughs> that it's unfortunate, okay. but that's what happens. But you're absolutely right. So uh, that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You see the same thing happen with conspiracy theories. You see the same thing happening with, you know, uh, vaxxers, or I should say anti-vaxxers. And with the UFOs, the thing is, no matter what, they have already made up their mind. We have been visited. There is life outside of our solar system. Um, Aliens are among us. Uh, crop circles, all this stuff. And my thing is like, if it weren't for movies, none of this crap would exist. All of this crap comes out of movies. It's Hollywood. Hollywood has fueled our obsession with UFOs and alien life. And I really believe that. But you being a scientist, I'm interested. What do you guys in your community looking out into space for your entire life. How do you view UFOs? First of all, I, I love me some aliens. Nobody doesn't love the aliens. Okay. Right? That would be a discovery of, of all of civilization. If aliens showed up and we sat down and had tea with them. Actually, if they showed up and we did anything with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> whether or not we serve tea. So, Most likely so, they would serve tea while they eat us. <laughs> oh, that, see, see the movies. Got you. I'm telling you, the movies. It's all movies. <laughs> so let me offer a, just a couple of uh, perspectives, just so we can. Let me orbit it first with perspectives, and then I'll land in the middle by the end. Okay. So first of all, notice how frequently aliens are hostile to us as portrayed in movies, uh, and that goes back to the Twilight Zone and before, of course. The, one, one of the more famous episodes. They had aliens in many episodes, by the way, but this is back in the 1960s, late 50s. They had uh, an episode called To Serve Man, where aliens came and they helped us grow crops and they gave us secrets to our energy needs and they, there was peace all over the earth and they invited us to go back and visit them. And uh, they accidentally left behind a book called To Serve Man within their own sort of hieroglyphic kind of text. And so they got all the best cryptographers looking at it. And after everyone has already decided, yeah, let's go visit their planet because they're obviously superior to us. And we're all very well fed because the crops were bounty uh, all over the earth. And then you know, they find out that to serve man it is a cookbook. That's awesome. It, it's a cookbook. That's so, so, great. <laughs> now, it, it is rumored. I've not studied this, but I've, I've read studies that to a child, it is far worse to be eaten than to just die. So of all the ways to die, they're not even afraid of other ways to die, but the idea of being eaten is particularly horrifying. I think to and anybody. that's what, well, <laughs> okay. Not just but children. Especially children. But, and that's why the fairy tales are always involved. The Brothers Grimm, the, b- the witch the, the, eats the, the, you. The ogre you eats get, you. The troll eats you. They don't just stab you. you. Right. They, they don't shoot you. They don't throw you off a cliff. They eat they you. Eat you. And this is terrifying. And I think this is why we, as children, um, deeply respect T-Rex. Ask any kid who their favorite animal is. It's T-Rex. Because 
you respect anything that can eat you. Right. And then you bring them over to astrophysics and say, what's your favorite object in astrophysics? It's black holes because they can eat you. Well, okay. okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so, so here's the thing. So the, this evil alien concept, uh, I, it feels like we are basing this on actual evidence of how we treat each other rather than on any notion of how aliens would actually treat us. So, so in other words, we, we are projecting onto aliens what we already know we do to each other. Because in the history of civilization, dare I even use that word in these examples, yeah. you have a highly technologically able culture descends upon a less technologically able culture, particularly in the era of colonization of the world, and it never boded well for the culture that had less technology. Yeah, whoever, whoever was getting visited Visited, thank you. Got screwed. <laughs> Got That's screwed. That's all it was. To. Okay. And, and, and we do this to our own species. So I think our fear of aliens derives not from knowledge of how they would behave, but from knowledge of how we would behave. Mm. Not with each other and probably how we would treat other aliens as well. So, so I think that's what's going on there. That's my first point. Second, all the aliens portrayed, nearly all the aliens portrayed, they're, they're, they walk, they talk, they have two arms, legs, nose, eyes, mouth, head. Um, look at E.T., look at the aliens in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Look at, um, even in the movie series Alien, Alien followed by Aliens and that, right. that, Alien that insurrection. while it didn't specifically have legs, it, it, was, it was vertebrate, right? right? It had like a face. Right. A face is a very vertebrate thing to have. Yeah. All right. If you're not a vertebrate in this world, you don't have much of a face. However, okay. having, having two mouths, a mouth within a mouth, that was not a bad touch. Well, that's the that's the getting eaten part. Yes. That's a little more terrifying. Okay. So so uh, think about it. amoebas don't have mouths. Right. Uh, trees don't have mouths. Right. Uh, we just keep going down the list. And like I said, the, the traditional face that we think of, it, it tends to be a vertebrate phenomenon. And so we are then making aliens vertebrates, okay? Right. Uh, the movie Arrival, that was not a vertebrate. That was a oh, yeah. septipod. Right, that's right. Yeah. So, that was, so I like it when they try to go a little, uh, they step outside of the comfort box of how we think aliens should be. And it means, yeah, an actor is not getting a payday that day because they're not donning an alien costume right. in order to do this. Um, in the movie Arrival, which I recommend, you know, it has some, it has some strong points it's a cool in movie. it. It's a cool movie, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the aliens come and they have these pods positioned all around the world. By the way, the hubris of us to imagine that aliens would care about us or be curious about us. Right. That's hubris. It's like, we're so interesting that another species that can travel across the galaxy is going to study our behavior. When you're walking down the sidewalk and you see a worm, do you pause and say, gee, I wonder what that worm is thinking. Gee, let me, let me, let, let me figure out how this works. No, no. No, you put it on a hook and you go get dinner. <laughs> so, so just to believe that we are so interesting that something as advanced as a civilization with flying saucers to cross the galaxy would sit there and want to analyze us. So, so that's hubris, okay? Uh, so there's that. But also, consider uh, how many photographs are taken every day. Everybody's got a smartphone, right? Almost everybody. High resolution. Uh, and if you're not taking a photo, you're taking a video. And so you, if there's something unusual and interesting, you're taking a video of that. We have video of stuff you never got videos of before, like cops beating up black folk, okay? Right. I grew up, that's happened all the time. Right. Nobody had video. Nobody had video of it. Was it was cop, cop's word against the black person's word. We now have video of everything that was once rare. And it still makes no difference. <laughs> still, <So. laughs> Chuck editorializing. I'm sorry, I just had to the throw that in. Video. I'm, I'm just stating. I'm just stating the situation. So, you would think an alien encounter would be rare, but you've got a smartphone and you can stream it. 
in the old days when people said, did you take pictures of the alien that abducted you? Uh, yeah, but they stole the film. Or I got the film home and the whole roll was blank because the alien zapped it or whatever. So, so it's a recording device, but a streaming device is not a recording device. So you can live stream whatever is happening. All right. So, so you would expect, given how many reports of abductions there were right. of decades past, mm -hmm. That somebody would have that on, you know, that'd be posted by now, and it hasn't been. So this leads me to think strongly that people's imaginations got the better side of their life experience when they came back to report on having been abducted. Mm. Okay? So there's that. So, so, so that's aliens. That's just aliens. But how about UFOs? So you see something flying, and it's something you don't know what it is. And let me just say, I was going to tweet this too. Maybe I should. Uh, I was going to say, the fact that you don't know what it is is not evidence that you know what it is. <laughs> okay. That's actually, that's pretty profound because that's exactly what people do. So there's lights in the sky moving in a peculiar way, and you can't explain it. It's unidentified, and it's flying, and it's an object, so it's a UFO. It must be aliens. And then pe <laughs> So I don't know what it is. Therefore, it must be A, B, C, D, elemental P, alien. And I'm thinking, you just admitted. You don't, you don't know what know it is. What it is. That's kind of where that stops. We're done here, okay? It's time to get more and better data. Okay, so now, in science, do you know why science exists? Because the human sensory system sucks. That's why science exists. That makes sense. All right? We can see bands of light that your retina cannot. We can see things dimmer than the sensitivity of your cones can pick up, the cones in your, in your eye. We can, uh, the, the rods and cones, right, for detecting color and for... But, and, and, and brightness, we, we, um, those fail when you're trying to see things that are dim and outside of the range of what we call visible light. And this is, this is stuff we didn't even know existed until scientists discovered it. We discovered x-rays and ultraviolet and gamma rays and radio waves and, and microwaves. That's all light. Okay, we have telescopes honed into those windows to the universe and we drink in these phenomena and then convert them to ways that our senses can then detect them. We make a photo, we have chart recorders, this sort of thing. Point is, the advance of science and civilization with it came about primarily because we invented machines to replace our sensory system because it fails so badly. And look, why do we have whole books on, uh, what do you call them, on optical illusions, right? Right. Those are fun. We, nobody doesn't love an opt a good optical illusion. Right. And, 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 and what is an optical illusion? It's, oh, there's a line, and, and it's, it's simple, right? It's simple line drawing on a white page. Oh, is that line bigger than the other one? I don't know. Are they the same size? Oh, my gosh. Look how easy it is to fool you. And this is just a simple line drawing. <laughs> now I'm going to have something complicated in, in, in twilight, where in a, in a sky where you've never seen. But, and, and now you, I'm expecting you to give me an accurate account of what just happened? Uh, no. So in science, eyewitness testimony is the lowest form of evidence there is. In fact, it's so low, we don't even, we basically don't accept it. Wow. So when you see people say, this was a Navy pilot who's trained and he's a credible witness for what he saw, uh, you're saying your species check. You're saying that guy is just as much a dumbass as anybody standing on the ground. <laughs> that <laughs> Navy pilot or not, being a human being, he's susceptible to the same perception bias that anybody else Perception is. bias. And it's, it's not purposeful, you know. Right. They're not trying to, it's just the consequence of the human being trying to make sense of their world. And when things don't make sense, we have the urge to make it make sense so that we can think about it in some way that's consistent with our life experience. So I've had people say, uh, oh, I saw this 
this bright light in the sky, it was huge. So, no, they meant it was just bright because the vocabulary is... I, I saw this light and it was a few inches above Marty's Deli. What do you mean a few inches? Was it an angle? It was in the sky? You know, so our, even our capacity to retell things is compromised because we're human. All right. So all I'm asking for is among the six billion images and videos uplifted to the internet every day that are high resolution, uh, it'd be nice if a few of them had an alien getting out of their spacecraft. <laughs> or, or you going up to greet the Give me some footage of that, of some high res videos. But you don't have that. What you have is lately fuzzy Navy video. Right. monochromatic and so you're telling me that the aliens uh, are only revealing themselves to the Navy <laughs> well that's not a bad place to start <laughs> they, they do have the best uniforms <laughs> plus if the aliens are everywhere but do you know how many planes when we're in full flying mode you know how many planes are crisscrossing this planet every minute right all right. If we were, if there were aliens all over the place, this would be like a major hazard for airplanes. Okay, and we'd be seeing them all the time. All right. So we take this one case out of tens or hundreds of thousands, and it's a weird thing, and nobody can explain it, and all of a sudden everybody can explain it. So that's the I don't know what it is, but therefore I know what it is. So, by the way, we as scientists, we'd love to meet the aliens. I have no problems with this. We just need better evidence than your credible witness. I just need better evidence than your fuzzy video. But anyhow, I, I'm ready for them. Bring them on. And it just, I, it just seems to me if we'd be visited, more than the Navy would notice it. That's all I'm saying. And you think the government is keeping secrets? First, you think the government is competent enough to keep such a secret? If we were stockpiling aliens, you don't think a cell phone image is going to get out Something. of Area 51? Something will so, get out. You, you don't, really? Right. Really? Do you really think the government is that competent? Really? Anyone who's worked for the government knows differently. Right. And of course the government tries to keep secrets. Of course they try. But anything as juicy as an alien? Plus... If aliens are on their way, do you know how many telescopes we have pointing up to the night sky? Right. Do you realize how, do you realize how much the night sky is being monitored by people other than human beings? Also, do you realize we have cameras pointing downward? You know, Google Earth are downward pointing cameras. Okay? All right? If aliens are landing and taking off, we would have footage. So instead of asking, how come scientists don't agree that what you can't identify is alien, try to think differently about it and ask if they were aliens visiting Earth, what would that be like? Somebody would see it, somebody would have photographed it, it would have ended up in Google Earth, it would show up in many, 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 many more airplanes, given how many airplanes fly around the Earth every single hour. Or just think that through. The absence of that level of supportive evidence, for me, is very strong against the alien interpretation of something you can't identify in the night sky. So, and by, by the way, keep, keep, get, bring a net, grab one. You'll be rich and famous overnight, more power to you. I'm not going to get in your way. But your, what you present as what you think is evidence is insufficient in our scientific court of law. This has been a Star Talk Explainer, Neil deGrasse Tyson, signing off by bidding you to keep looking up. <laughs>